So on the island, nobody's going to say, but, but, but how are we going to, like, they might actually ask the honest question, but they don't say, if we don't have a king, how are we going to blah, blah, blah? They just have the practical question of, how are we going to get drinking water? And they don't mean, and we better have a king if you can't answer this. And most people, what they mean when they're asking, but if we don't have government, they're saying, I'm going to cling to government. I want a ruling class. I want an authority until you can explain to me how that thing's going to happen without it. And that is an inability to be responsible. That is immaturity to say, I want this big, powerful, mythical deity to save the day until you can tell me that everything will be okay. And one of the things I like about the island analogy is, obviously, there is no guarantee everything will be okay. We're on an island in the middle of nowhere. We don't know what the hell we're doing. There's no guarantee of anything. And yet, in that setting, nobody says, got to appoint a king, because this is scary. Nobody thinks of that. And if I suggest it, so like none of them suggest it, and then eventually I suggest the government solution, and they all chuckle at it because it sounds as dumb as it is. We better appoint a king, because how else will we make a signal fire? It's like, what? Why? Shut up. You're an idiot. And they all know that. So it's just the process of getting them to sort of own their own responsibility, and I don't care what comes next. I don't even care what solutions they come up with. I don't care what preferences they are. I care that they go through the process of starting to exercise their brains thinking as self-owning human beings. Because when the world does that, we get a hell of a lot closer to utopia than we've ever been. Whereas if people sit around going, this is kind of inconvenient, authority, we get to hell, literally. You know, Mao's great leap forward was, oh, he has great ideas of how to make everything work. 42 million people die. Stalin's master plan, Hitler's master plan, one master plan after another, Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge, and huge list. Millions and millions of people are dying because somebody says, I have a plan, and everybody goes, he has a plan, let's follow him. And then people die, and there's wars and, and poverty and starvation. The solution is, in one sense, chaos. The chaos of there is no central control. And that's one of the hardest things is for people to grasp and, and accept the fact that you do not have control over the world and you should not have control over the world and you don't need control over the world. Being, being to get Zen, being at one with the fact that you don't control the world is the first step towards being an adult and realizing, well, I control me, and I talk to other people, and we can organize, and we can do stuff, and we can get along and figure things out. But the desire to control the world, and which often has to do with fear-mongering. I'm scared of the things that might happen. I want somebody to control it to make sure these bad things never happen. And unfortunately, that desire is what makes the bad things happen. I don't want there to be terrorism. There is terrorism because of the governments that people want because they don't want terrorism. I don't want there to be poverty. There has been mass poverty and starvation because of the governments that people elected to protect them from mass starvation and poverty. I don't want crime. And, and a government creates the crime. It happens over and over again. And it's, it's, you know, it's very counterintuitive that the best way to control evil is don't even try. Don't try to make a master plan. Don't try to have an all-powerful good guy because he's going to be an all-powerful bad guy and then you're going to go, oh crap, we made him all-powerful. Guess that was a bad idea. Just realize you control yourself, you know, if that much, and that's it. And the rest of the world, what's going to happen is going to happen. And you do your best with other people and you act like a responsible adult. And the island analogy forces people into that mindset and you can see people's brains doing it for the first time like they've never thought about it. You know, when it comes to, well, if somebody's poor, oh, that's what the welfare state is for. There's a fish thief. You call the cops. There's always an authoritarian thing to brush it off on. They've never had to think for themselves. I mean, even going back to school, you know, you will sit here next to a bunch of other people, a bunch of other subjects. You will listen to the authority. You have no practice being in charge of your own life. So if the, if the teacher walks out, all the kids go... What do we do? They don't even know how to have a life. They don't even ha have any idea what they would do if their life was their own because they've never experienced it. 
So the island analogy is sort of there. Your life is your own, whether you like it or not, what are you going to do about it? And the beauty is every group does really, really, really well, and all of their solutions are always better than every government solution, always. And it demonstrates that everybody is an anarchist and that anarchism works and that they know it because they don't advocate government. They always advocate anarchy. And none of them notice it until I point it out at the end and they all go, oh yeah, it was all voluntary. It was, there was no ruling class. There was no, you know, there was hierarchy, the voluntary kind, like the guy who knows how to build huts and will do that. But he doesn't get to conscript people. And so I basically show like, Thank you for showing that you believe in anarchism. Didn't you? I didn't have to tell you to. I just showed that you already do. And incidentally, the mirror actually uses the island analogy, using the animated version of it to do a bunch of the questioning. Um, because I found it There are plenty of people in the world who are eager to throw their ideas and opinions at you, who want to tell you what you should care about, what you should believe, what you should think, and how you should live your life. But this is not that. Instead, the purpose of the mirror is to take you on a journey inside your own mind, to let you explore the inner world of your own thought processes. The mirror is not about what facts you know or how smart you are. It's about exploring what you believe, how you see the world, and why. An interactive process where the way you answer certain questions determines where you will go and what you will discover next. In here, you are the scientist and the subject. You are the doctor and the patient. In here, you will decide what is true and what is false, what is right and what is wrong. But be warned, while digging into the inner workings of your own thoughts, you may discover things you didn't know were there, things that may make you uncertain and uncomfortable. So the first, and perhaps the most important question, is this. If... For whatever reason, you weren't seeing the world as it really is. If certain misunderstandings and false assumptions were causing you to think things and do things which go against what you really believe in and who you really are, would you want to know about it? Then let's begin. This journey is best taken alone, when you're free from distractions and not in a hurry so you can take your time and give thoughtful, honest responses to the questions asked, knowing that no one is going to criticize your answers or argue with your opinions. All of the questions are multiple choice, often just yes or no, and how you answer each question determines what the next question will be. If you're not sure you understand a question or aren't sure how to answer, choose more info. You will even be given chances to go back and change your previous answers if you want to. The purpose here is not to trap you or to see if you get the right answers. The purpose is to help you investigate and sort out some of what goes on inside your own head, to see what makes you think what you think and do what you do. You can also leave the mirror whenever you want to, and you will be given a number code so that if you come back an hour later or a month later, you can pick up right where you left off. When you're ready, hit launch to begin. <laughs>